Watoto wa Mungu Bwana asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Happy Sabbath. And happy day. I'm glad to see each one of you. And thank you for braving it to come and worship the Lord as we unite our voices in praise of him. It is evangelism day and uh, the atmosphere is full with many things. So I'm praying for your honest prayer that you lift me up before the Lord as we go through the word of God in Jesus' name. Our key text is taken from the book of Matthew. The final command for the master from the master. The great commission. As is recorded in the book of Matthew. The chapter is uh, uh, 28. 16 through 20. A very, very powerful passage. Without going into many things, I appreciate the privilege of preaching the word of God. And I'm forever grateful because of the pastoral council granting us, me, an opportunity. And my brethren in the evangelism department to run the day today. We plead for the power of the Holy Spirit that his divine presence will be manifest in the day and that you will be richly blessed in Jesus' name. So I want us to rise up in honor of the word of God. Shall we all rise up as we read the word of God? There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in that precious blood of the Lamb. Imongu vu, ngu vu, ningu vu ya jabu, damuni, mwa yesu. Imongu vu, ngu vu, ningu vu ya jabu, msalabani, mwa yesu. Our reading is taken from the book of Matthew chapter 28. The focus is 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Shall we kneel down as we pray? Holy Father in heaven, Almighty, all-powerful, and all-knowing God, the ecclesiastical being to whom every other power is subordinate. We come before your holy presence in Jesus' mighty name, 
O Lord our God. I'm not alone, I'm with your people, the visitors and fellow members of New Life, our pastors. We have come to worship you. I plead with you that you will use me for the glory and honor of your name. I'm aware that whenever your name is glorified, it pleases you to bless your people. Pray, Jehovah, that your name will be glorified in such a way that you will be willing to bless your people in Jesus' name. Thank you that there is power. It's not just another power, but it's wonder-working power. And it is in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, you request us to be willing to do service for the Lord. Thank you, Jehovah, that you knew that it would feel lonely like it feels for me. And therefore, you promise that you will be with us. I pray that you will be with me. That I will disappear. For you know the circumstances of your children. The condition of their hearts. You fear us nobody. I pray, Jehovah, that you consume me. That I will disappear. That I will not be seen, but Christ will be seen. Have mercy on me. May we be revived by your word. And may we be transformed by this word. May the power of the Holy Spirit presence be evident. May the chariots and the intelligences, the army of heaven surround us. May we be lifted in the atmosphere of heaven before your throne room of grace as you speak to each one of us. Forgive our many sins, Holy Father. And hear our prayer and above it all, remember us in your kingdom to come. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. The title of our sharing is uh, our assignment. Our assignment. The assignments become very scary, particularly if you're not prepared for them. If you have not gone through the syllabus, you become scared. Even for the teachers, it is not easy to mark assignments for students that are not properly taught. Because you need to know the syllabus, the loss on plan, and the schemes of work for you to have proper delivery. Otherwise, students will complain that even though you have given assignments, you did not cover the topics. So the topic is our assignment. And the reading is taken from the word of God, the book of Matthew. Usually, we start it at verse 19, go ye therefore. But sometimes we start it at verse 18. But the setting of the Great Commission is verse 16. Because it says, then the eleven disciples, Judas is excluded, went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. There's already a, a crisis even with that setting. Judas has already left. Even though there were 12, the Bible records the 11 that are remaining are the ones who went into the mountain of Galilee. They doubted. Some worshipped him, but some doubted. So Christ is already. But Christ comes in to bring normalcy and to dispel the fear. And how does he do it? He says, all authority. Praise the Lord. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. On that basis, go and make disciples. Bwana Yesu Christo asifiwe. Amen. 
all is the greatest number in the universe and all does not need to be many it is a number of total authority praise the lord praise the lord so notice the scope and the scope is all authority that's the scope all authority if christ has all authority then we must agree that no one else has any authority when a mungu bwana sifiwe if jesus christ has all authority no one else has any what authority it doesn't matter who is the president of the united states of america does not have any authority the president of kenya and the, the coming one has no what authority the governors has no authority because all authority is vested in who in jesus christ all authority and it pleases me that i serve the one who has all authority when our mungu bwana sifiwe the one whom we serve does not have just some authority but all what authority it's beautiful all authority has been given to me no one else has any powers the kingdom of the enemy has no authority we have seen the scope the sphere is that this authority is in heaven and on earth on earth the armies of heaven cries as authority the devil and his ministers the lord has on all what all authority when you read that statement you can conclude that jesus is a prophet because there is no prophet that has any what all authority meaning jesus is the lord of all bwana mungu bwana asifiwe the lord of all and he's so beautiful so we have an assignment and the assignment we have is to preach the gospel to tell the world about the one who has all what all authority to submit to this lord and the only way you can do that is to make disciples but only a disciple can make a what a disciple amen when christ is, is addressing this crowd he's addressing disciples and he's telling them go and this were mere 11 men about 500 people and they were to go to the then world and turn the world all around and they did not have any money they did not have any building they were scattered they were not an organized group but the mission organized them and brought them in oneness praise the lord and before they go they are told in the book of acts wait for power that you will you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you and you will be witnesses of me where in where jerusalem judea samaria and unto the ends of the world of the world that's the coverage and i'm happy that the gospel of jesus christ is moving not many years ago almost two years ago we had ckc as a conference now it has been divided into four the gospel is expand expanding territorially the question is are you within the territory and your children or your house of the territory if you belong to the republic of kenya it means you are not a child of the kingdom 
The territory is expanding. And the commandment from God is that you begin from where? Jerusalem. Most of the time the reason why we have troubles is because we don't use the schedule that God has given. And unless you use the schedule, you'll never arrive at the desired end. Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, Oh now to desire for children, that these words of mine, first and foremost, shall be in your heart. Then you will teach them to your children. And the schedule of teaching is that you'll teach in the morning and in the day, you'll teach in the evening. Wherever you see your children, you should command them. Teach them the commandment of who? Of God. And I'm happy to see my son, Riaga, doing his best. The reason why our children are like this is because the schedule of teaching from God has been ignored. Morning and what? Let me see the parents here who teach their children the word of God in the morning and in the evening. I wish the pastors would stand and see. That schedule has been ignored. That's you, the ruin you see in our families. Unless you are willing to do what God has said, Elder Ken Chuka, we will not achieve the desired results. You'll find yourself as an elder, but with no disciples at home. And the problem is not the children, it's that the father is pretending it's not a disciple. For only a disciple can make another word disciple. So we have ignored the, the schedule of teaching at home. Yet it is at home that the teaching, the making of the disciples should begin. So it starts in Jerusalem. People have gone to Samaria. They have gone to Galilee. They are going to the ends of the earth. But they have got, not gone to where? Jerusalem. The approach of the gospel should begin where? Jerusalem. And when you say that, you think it is easy. It is not easy. I've been trying my Jerusalem with my children. With Mr. Okumu. It is the hardest task I've ever had to face. And whenever I'm overwhelmed, I appreciate and I say, hey, Father, you knew. No wonder you said all authority has been given me. There is power. And that is what gives us the confidence to go. However difficult it is because we are going on the basis, on the command of the one who has what? Authority. It's a huge task. To make disciples at home. It is a little easy to make them out there. But right in the house. To convert your husband. To convert your wife. To face your children and be united. In Christ. Is the hardest thing. It is easy to sing. But to go at home. And face the people who know you well. And face them and tell them you want you to be deserved for, for Christ. It's the hardest thing. So we run around. We go to Samaria. But going to Samaria will not face Jerusalem for you. You need to face what? Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to be bold enough to face Jerusalem. Don't argue this commission. People did not, did not contribute. They did not give the advice. It was a statement. A command. And it was to be done. The way the chief commander. Our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ had outlined it. And that's it. Say it. Wait for power. That you may be witnesses for me. What kind of a witness are you at all? 
How well have you done? At home. Elder Paul one guy. Can see you with your wife and your children. But how well have you done? At home. That's the question that begs an answer. And it is so tough. Brothers and sisters. And unless you start it at home. You are only acting in church. There are a lot of actors. That even heaven is surprised about. Who is that? Who is trying to preach in new life? It's Rosalyn. And they check the books of heaven. We can't see her name here. What is she doing there? That one is an actor. She loves acting. Before the congregation. Saying that he knows God. Yet when we check the books, the records of heaven, doesn't have her name. Elder Wasonga does seven have your name. Or you are just an actor. Those are the group that God tells in the book of Matthew. Go away from me. I never did what? I never knew you. And they look and they say he's right. They never argued. It's a character I want to use to show, to see how he did it. That we may go back and do it as he did it. Amen? Amen. There's a father here that you look at and you say, I wish I was his wife. Because then I would have been guaranteed salvation. Amen. And that man is Jacob. His story is recorded in the book of Genesis chapter 32. The focus is going to be verse 24 through 30. And it reads as follows. Then Jacob left, was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the day, day until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip. And the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you do what? Unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you do what? You bless me. The wrestling and the lesson I think covered it very, very well. That everything else that happened in the life of Jacob, the story that we have today comes from this text. Comes from this wrestling. Everything you see going forward was on the basis of this wrestling. We know the story of Jacob. The brother to Isao. Isao had been promised the blessings of a firstborn. But he took them lightly. He sold them for a plate of the soup of soup of lentils. Later on, his children became the servants of the children of Jacob. Because of how he regarded the blessings of God. Jacob wanted these blessings so much so. And God is aware of how desperately you are, you are for the blessings that you are seeking before him. We have a God who watches us and I am so shocked at how he does it. He started watching you when you are young. He is watching you children as you are growing up. He is going to watch you through life. So be serious, there is a watcher who watches you. And looks at your intention. He wanted these blessings. And he stole the blessing. I don't want to go into the details. Because even as he was stealing the blessing, the father knew that this robbery taking place. Because he said, your voice is the voice of Jacob. But your body is the body of what? Isha. Who are you? When you speak in church, you speak like an Adventist. But your accent out there is like a hidden. Who are you? When you sing, you sing a 
as a child of God of the remnant church but your dressing is like a prostitute who are you God wants to know who you are my brothers and sisters elder munda if you take a pig and you put him in a limousine and take the pig to Karen and you come back you'll still come back with a pig i'm saying this to say that if you smell you smell doctor yo your love of education cannot remove the smell of your life if you smell you smell the smell there is no powerful perfume that can remove the smell of your armpit if you smell you smell your smell need a powerful perfume and that perfume is the blood of the lamb when our mungu bwana asifiwe the smell of your life need a powerful reagents it needs the blood of jesus christ he sees the blessing he fled from home christ meets with him at bethel and he see a ladder he saw a ladder with angels ascending and descending on it at the top of the ladder was jesus christ but obsessed with the money when he came to pray he tells god if you'll take care of me and give me food and clothes and take care of me and bring me back then you will be my god possessed with looking for money you know some of us are possessed with looking for money that we have forgotten the assignment we exchange vehicles i tried it i'm happy that i don't have the money to do it now i'm normal i thank god for that praise the lord without knowing elder murwa that nothing you multiply with zero will give you any significant number for zero times 10000 plots is equal to what zero times sales time and lipstick is equal to what zero times president is equal to what zero times governor is equal to what zero doesn't know a billion if you multiply zero with a billion you will end up with what the only thing that gives zero value is number next to it and that number is jesus christ jacob was nothing with all the money that he saw it god had led him and he had great occasion and what we miss in life are lost opportunities he had an opportunity to grab the hand of the almighty and walk with him but he asked for clothes and food went and became a servant of laban and yet he had been announced to be a king but now he's a servant in laban so and he says his labor was the hardest labor conceivable 20 years of no sleep looking for people's cattle and yet you have already been declared a king have you ever seen a king who is a shepherd in somebody so that is what happens to you when you don't want to improve the zero that you are by adding the number jesus christ next to you you remain a zero any time christ was seen in the life of anybody phoebe that person became a royalty a celebrity you only needed to see christ next to a person and that's it how beautiful it is even if you don't have much but you appear with jesus wana mungu bwana sifiwe for that is what counts He lives and is told that Esau is coming and he means hard. Chapter 32 verse 1. How is in the future we put the projector so that the preacher 
can also read with the congregation. Let's read chapter 32 verse 1. It says what? So Jacobo, Genesis chapter 32 verse 1. How does it read? So Jacobo went on his way. And the angel of God did what? Met him. When Jacobo saw them, he said, this is God's word. Come. Jacobo saw angels. I have not sent them. But it's a man like any of us. It's my prayer that one day I'll meet with them in Jesus' name. He saw them. But after seeing the angels, the company of heaven, he retrieves to his own plan and divides the cattle. Send messengers to Esau to ask for peace. He's told Esau is coming and 400 men are what? Are with him. Anytime the enemies come, will fight better. The only way of escape is if the Lord is with you. And then he starts to divide the cattle to send them to Esau. But I want to tell us that the plan of Jacobo, of who he was, did not help him. Time is coming when how much money you have will not help you. Time is coming when who you are in society will not help you. I'm saying this to say that the plan of Jacobo did not help him. But what helped him? It's the prayer that he made. Praise the Lord. Take time to do what? To pray. As a father of the family, take time to pray. So the first prayer in the Bible, part of the plan to fulfill our assignment begins with the prayer. And Jacob prayed in the book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 9. And it is this prayer that sorted out this man. Verse 9 says, Then, the, then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, Return to your country, and I will do well with you. And to your family, and I will do well with you. Verse 10. I'm not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truths which you have sown, your servant. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I've become two companies. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. The first prayer in the Bible. Jacobo is saying, I'm not worthy. But before he says his unworthiness, he invokes the name of his forefathers. The God of my father who? Abraham. Are you a father who can be invoked in moments of crisis? No one invokes the name of Terah because Terah was a devil worshiper. There's no blessings, Elder Tom Uma, that your children can receive from you from a man who works with the devil. The God of my father who? Abraham. The God of my father who? Isaac. No one mentioned terror. Because of his work, Elder Okute. When David is in problems, can he kneel down and say he's the, the God of my, my father? Elder Okute. That is what is meaningful. If we don't do that, we have robbed our children of inheritance. And they are out here with no help. You look at them and you wonder where is their father. The God of my father Abraham. The God of my father Isaac. The one who said to me, leave your country and I will do well with you. I'm not worthy. Sister Nora. Don't sit there, my sister, and you think you are worthy of the blessings and the mercies the Lord has given you. Some of us came into this city, Namagari Matanga, 
Some of us came in this city as maids. Some of us came in this city living with people. We had no place to sleep. Today, the Lord has blessed you. It's good to take note where the Lord has brought you from. Don't let fellow church members to be the ones Elder Tom good to recognize the blessings of the Lord in your life. That's carelessness. Sit down to take note Elder Dualo Meshach of the blessings the Lord has put in your life. Don't let other people say who ya likuja hapa bila hata kitu ya maana. Now we are seeing him do better. That's recklessness. Jacobo is taking note that I crossed over this Jordan with a staff in my word. My hand. But now I've become what? To company. But he's also lying there because he says, save me from the hands of my brother Ishao, for I fear him. Lest he comes and hit me, harm me with the mother. Jacobo is sleeping with four different women. And he's talking about one word. It's lying. People want to claim God's promises. But they are never willing to do the will of God. You told me that you will take care of me. But is, is he living within the context of blessings? God has not ordained multiple relationships. He has not. So God did not answer, but he prayed. We are not seeing an immediate answer, but we thank God Jacob did what? Prayed. Take the amount of money you have, Jacinta will not help you. All those plans will fail. What will carry the day is the prayer that you utter. Take time to pray. It is this prayer that helped him. Not the money he had. He took time to pray. Then after the prayer, he divided the cattles. According to how he loved the women. That's why I'm saying you should never be a second fiddle for anyone, young girls, in Jesus' name. So the children... Of the maids at the front. Next to him is Joseph and Rachel, the one he loved. But I thank God because God is watching all these activities. And this is what caused subdivision in Jacob's soul. In case I forget, if you want to divide your home, Marry a second wife. If you want to be miserable, go out there and have relationships. Even inside here, just try. Because I believe if you want to be wicked, if you want to be a prostitute, be professional about it. Just go in the streets and sleep with women will not ask you. Go there and sleep with men, no one will follow you. Jacobo took time to be alone. And you see, when you are alone, people, when they are alone, they pray specific prayers, not all say. Prayers now become retail. Where you say, I want sugar, not in a box, but I want what? Sugar. That's where you tell God, I am promiscuous. I am an adulterer. I'm a devil worshiper, Father. Have mercy on me. I think that's what happened. After the, the prayer with the family, Jacob left and went to be alone. And when he's alone, the Lord followed him when he was what? Alone. The Bible says that somebody began to wrestle with him. And they wrestled. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters. It is hard to remove wickedness when it has matured in your life. 
God almost left Jacob. I'm telling young people, Elder Macro teach, when you allow the enemy to grow in your life, until you are old, it is the hardest thing to remove him. God almost left Jacob with this sin. Because the Bible says it was about daybreak. And God told him, let me go for the day is what? Breaking. And when the day breaks, three things. Number one, you will be exposed. You can never hide in sin forever. When the day breaks, you will be seen for who you are. Take advantage. Repent before what? Day breaks. Bible says, no one sees God and lives. It may be also that the Lord did not want to kill Jacob. Because if the day broke and he saw God, that would have meant that he kills him. So he says, let me go. The day is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go until you do what? You bless me. Then he was asked, what is your word? Your name. And that's the significant question. And we need to realize that Jacob is inside each one of us. The blessings of the Lord will never be poured until we say who we are. Who are you in this church? You can lie to us, but you'll never lie to God. You keep your sin, your sin will expose you. The day will break, break on you. What is your name? A significant question that needed a significant answer. What is your name? Or tells him you can lie to your father because your father is blind. I'm not blind. Jacob took advantage of his mother's love. He took advantage of his wife. He took advantage of Laban. Even practicing witchcraft. Who are you? The blessings of the Lord. My brethren in your life will never be poured out until you confront who you are. Jacob never said his name. When his father asked him, who, you, who are you? Jacob said, I am who? Esau. When they met with Rachel at the well, Rachel asked him who he is. He said, I am the brother. I am the son to be the brother of your father. Running away from who he is. You will run, but someday you will not run. God will catch up with you because the, the arm of the Almighty is following you. For the first time, Jacob said, I am who? I am who? Jacob. For the first time, Jacob accepted to confront who he is. He said, I'm a manipulator. I'm a pretender, a conniver, I'm a deceiver. I pretend to be who I'm not. I'm a witch. That's who I am. And the Bible says that he was touched at the hip. When you're touched on the, at the hip, you have lost balance. And some of us with careful observation, you'll see that God has already injured you. People who have been disabled at the hip... Learns to lean. But what are you leaning on? You have already been injured at the socket. Your finances shows that you have been injured. Terminal diseases, injury. The situation of the family, you have been what? Injured. Wrestling with God. God has wrestled with you even with diseases. That he may remove Jacob out of you. You have refused. Why was it touched at the hip? I've been wondering, struggling with that text. Why not the head? Why not the hand? That's where the problem is. Jacob is sleeping with four different women. And he's the priest of the home. No one can have prayers in his home as a priest who is sleeping with women out here. Elder Tom, never! You'll be praying in this pulpit, but never in your house. Do you know we have elders? That the last prayer they had was in the pulpit. Maybe not in new life. You can never pray and tell your children, let's gather and pray. 
na umeweka mpango wa kando hapa nje you will never do that Jacob is the priest of the home but busy sleeping with women there's no worship and as a result there is chaos in this home children are fighting each other god touched him because after that before that you see women are competing with childbirth after he was touched in the place where he needed to be touched there was no more childbirth except when the covenant was renewed in Genesis chapter 35 and he was willing to be touched because he said i am who jacob who are you we see you walk in church drive nice cars we have seen you come walking nicely we've seen you serve in the deaconry you serve in development you serve in whatever departments in elders council you serve in pastoral council but who are you god wants to know who you are before he can do what bless us for the first time jacobo said i'm who i'm jacobo when jacobo was saying bless me i'm not leaving you unless you do what you bless me you realize jacobo is not saying bless the children He's not saying bless the cattle. Jacob is saying bless me. Because if you bless me, my children are blessed. If you bless me, the cattle is blessed. If you bless me, the women will be blessed. How can your wife be blessed when you're living your life as a customer? You know when you live your life as a customer and everything you curse and is attached to you, you curse. Be it your sisters you curse them with your life. Be it the, the the church board you curse it. Your presence curses it. It does not bless it. Even as you sit in the pastor pastor council you either curse there or what? A blessing. What does your life represent in this life like church? What does your life represent in your home? Are you a father who is cursed or you are blessed? Are you a mother who is cursed? Or are you blessed? Jacob said, "Do what? Bless me that my family will be blessed." And the Bible says that he touched him and his name he blessed him there. When you need God's blessing, you don't have to take an airplane for it. When God blesses you, he blesses you where the prayer has been made. Amen. Amen. And his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Jacob reminded him of his sin. Israel commemorated his victory. From Jacob to do what? To Israel. And I'm here to tell us that we need a name change. When our Mungu Bwana asifiwe for us to face the assignment we must receive a name change from Jacob to Israel. Praise the Lord. His name was changed from Jacob to Israel. The Lord blessed him there. His name was changed. Heaven knows your name. No one will enter heaven without a name change. But how are you known now? As a devil worshiper? As a thief? As an adulterer? We need a name change. Praise the Lord. Amen. For the first time when you read chapter 35 of course that wrestling gave him power to meet with Esau his brother and everything that happens after that happens as a result that Jacob wrestled with God and prevailed he overcame to overcome does not mean he was stronger than God to overcome means that Jacob allowed God to conquer him amen That's how we prevailed. My prayer is that you will allow God to conquer you in the way you dress, the way you eat, the company you keep, in what you watch. Allow God to conquer you. Here we win by losing. Only those who lose wins. Allow God to conquer you that you may win in Jesus name. Amen. Chapter 35 because he has been made no more. Verse one says then God said to Jacob that he, that is after the attack in Shechem his children went and circumcised all the, the the people of Shechem and there was terror 
And Jacob, God spoke and told him. Then God said to Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau, your brother. See the history. God is watching us. From the time he was fleeing Esau, God saw him. And then verse 2 says, And Jacob said to his household, And to all who are with him, Put away your what? Foreign what? Gods. That are among you, Purify yourselves, And change your what? Your garments. Powerful. The guy is normal now. Jacob knew that in his family there were other gods. Jacob knew what to do before he presented his children to worship. So he says, put away other what? Other gods. That's a normal man who is resuming the priesthood position of his family. Change your what? Your garments. Kuna nguo za ibada buwana. Sio kila nguo ni ibada. Sister Masi, kuna nguo za nini? Za ibada. We are going to worship. Kuna nguo za ibada. Even in, in the book of, of, of Isaiah chapter 37, Ezekiah finds a terrible report. The Bible says that he put on sack what? Sack clothes. Nguo za nini? Za ibada. I'm trying. With my children. So that they were vying who was Ibada. It's the hardest thing. These things are not easy unless you allow God to conquer you. They are clothes for worshiping God. Put them on. Change your clothes. We are going to appear before God. There is crisis. How can you dress as if it is normal and yet there is crisis? Put on. Change your clothes. Give me the other foreign what? Gods that are in you, within you. And that's when they gave him all the what? The foreign gods. My brothers and sisters, that's your assignment. To make sure that there's no position, Elder Murwa, in worship of God in your home. That happiness must be brought to the worship of true God. The children must be brought to the worship of the true God. The true God. But because the man had allowed God to conquer him, it was easy for him to conquer his family. That's when Rachel gave up the gods of his father that she stole in the book of Genesis chapter 31. And Laban chased them seven days. Sometimes I, I admire the strength of devil worshippers. When did you seek after God for seven days? Looking for gods that can be stolen. He's looking for his God. His God has been what? Stolen. If you want to know that you are thick, look at the kind of God in your life and in your family. He's chasing after God that has been what? Seven good days. And when he finally finds them, he didn't care about his children, not even his, his daughters. He asked, who has taken my God? He asked Jacob, I know you had an interest with your family, but why have you taken my gods? They were called house gold gods. Which gods are in your houses? Household gods. And Rachel is the one who sat on them. All this time. And she was the one who was in charge of the, the sleeping timetable. Chaos in Jacob's family. Coming from this woman. But for the first time when the man became normal. Man, you need to be normal. Eldomurwa. You don't know what happiness had in her bag. Akitoka kuwa. And unless you are normal. You will be shocked. At the havoc that woman will create in your home. I'm just giving that as an example. Of course, Okumu may not know the things that I carried from my father's home. Mary Lynn, Ken may not know. And Ken, you'll never know until you become a man and say, I'm the priest of this home. In case Mary Lynn has other gods from her home, that's when she will give them up.
And we thank God for the power that has placed in the man as the priest of this home, of the homes, in Jesus' name. Allow God to conquer you. That you may conquer your home for God. For the first time. And there are things that a company makes God speak. You know you can pray, but God will never speak. But there are certain things that happen, Pastor Lumpes, that makes God speak. When you bring the home into true worship. The moment Jacob said, give me other gods that are amongst you. And the Bible says that they gave him all the what? The other gods. Including the earrings that were in their what? Yes, that's why Adventists, we don't put earrings. Because they are in the same what? Category of what? Other gods. They gave that in preparation of worship. Worship needs preparation. It needs garments. And God doesn't want competition of other gods in your life. They must be put what? Away. You see this gate? You continuously enter here with these other gods. My brothers and sisters. There's a day you will sleep and never wake up. This practice of entering here with other gods needs to be stopped in Jesus' name. Remember where God took you from. Some of us, we are being ruined in the world. Exhibitionists are never exhibiting God. God has done so much to bring me up to the point where I am. I don't know where he has brought you from. Some of us were facing terrible ruin out there. But the arm of the creator has brought us up to his church and given us titles. You sit there, you think you deserve to be an elder. It is God. He has done his best until you, are, you can line up here in the choir. And you are singing. Rebecca, it's God. And you enter with other gods. That's why he told the children of Israel. Because he protect them with a cloud in the day. And in the night, a pillar of what? Of fire. But below the cloud, below the pillar, they practice sexual immorality. They are idols. And God spoke and said, they will never enter my word, my rest. Understand where God has brought you from. Because not everybody can enter that gate. It takes God to come in. People have money, but they never worship. They are in politics. Exhibiting how much wealth they have. You can't go into politics unless you have money. It's the grace of God to enter here. And you enter with other gods continuously. You have forgotten the amount of effort to save you. And God told them, you'll never enter my word. My rest. But we thank God they gave up their gods. And Rachel gave up other gods that she had. And the Bible says that that motivated God to speak. Amen? Amen. Fathers who are here and our mothers who are here. Our assignment is to make sure that there are no other gods that are keep competing with God in our homes in Jesus' name. Amen. Beatrice, that is your number one priority. To make sure that in your home Nothing competes with God. When God saw that, he spoke. And he renewed the what? The covenant. And God renews the covenant. He says, chapter 35. Then God, that is verse 9. Then God appeared to Jacob again. When he came from Pan Panaram. And blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacobo. Your name shall not be called who? Jacobo anymore. But who? Israel. Shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you. And kings shall come from your body. Powerful. How do you forsake this to be a devil worshiper? Kings shall come from you. The covenant is being renewed. On the basis of what has happened. Giving up other gods. 
and putting on the right garments for what? For worship. Praise the Lord. Whatever Mungu Bwana sifiwe. God spoke. He renewed the covenant. When you do this, you will hear God speak in your life. When you do these two things, you will hear God speak in your circumstances. When you do this, God will speak in your home. He said the name again. You know, since the wrestling in chapter 32, you are not hearing Jacob being called Israel. Because there were things that he needed to do. To get family in unity of worship of the true God. Then now God announces that you shall no longer be called Jacob. But who? Israel. Because he has removed other gods from his home. And from the life of his children. That name is quiet. Until chapter 45 or 46, when finally the entire family is reconciled, when they meet with who? Joseph. And Joseph forgives his brothers. The family now is enjoying 100% what? Unity of worship of Jehovah. Praise the Lord. That is how that name was established to date. Because Jacob succeeded. How did he succeed? By allowing God to succeed in his life. By allowing God to conquer him. He brought the unity of worship. You don't know what, how beautiful it is to see your children, your wife, your husband, united in the worship of true who? True God. God must speak. He spoke. And when God speaks, he speaks blessings. He says, nations shall come from you and kings shall come from your loins. Because of the honor you have given me in your home. How can you forfeit that? And allow the enemy to be the God of your home. I finish by saying that Jacob cannot bless. Only Israel can do what? Can bless. And we see that in chapter 48, verse 1. Let's read that as we finish. Chapter 48, verse 1 says, Genesis chapter 48 says, Now it came to pass after these things that Joseph was told, Indeed, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Fast forward, verse 4. Verse 3 says, Then Jacob Jacobo said to Joseph, God Almighty appeared to me at loose in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Verse 4, And he said to me, Blessed, behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you. And I will make of you a, a multitude of people and give this land to your descendants after you as an everlasting possession. Verse 5. And now you are two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, who were born to you in the land of Egypt before I came to you in Egypt, are mine. And Reuben, as Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Verse 6. Your offerings, whom you beget after them, shall be yours. They will be called by the name of their brothers in their inheritance. Verse 7. But as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died besides, beside me in the land of Canaan on the way, when there was but a little distance to go to Ephrath. And I buried her there on the way to Ephrath. Verse 8, then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, who are these? That's the interchange of names. He sees them, it's the moment for blessings. And Jacob cannot bless. We see the name change. Jacob cannot bless. The one who can bless is who? Israel. So we see that Israel. Then Joseph's, then Israel saw Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, They are my what? Sons whom God has given me in the place, in this place. And he said, Please bring them to me, and I will bless what? Bless them. Fast forward. Verse 14 says, Then Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it on Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand on Manasseh's head, guiding his sons knowingly. For Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed who? And he blessed Joseph. For the blessings to go to Ephraim and Manasseh, the blessing must first come to their what? To their father. 
Are you a father who is blessed? For there's no one who is going to bless your children. There's no any other father who can bless another father's, another man's child. For your children to be blessed, the blessing must come from their word, from their father. Amen? Even Jacobo could not directly bless Ephraim and Manasseh. The blessing had to come through who? Through Joseph. Only a father who is blessed can bless your children. We need the Lord's blessings. Even to carry out the gospel. And I'm a member of New Life. My brothers and sisters as I close. It shocks me. How we have deteriorated. I don't know morally. But in times of giving. I just get saddened. At least I'm in leadership now. I've been in leadership. I saw when we were giving when I was in development. And I thank God. Now I'm in evangelism. The first campaign we had. I had the privilege of having the list. And how we were giving. Elder Ken Uma. Tom Uma. And there are names you look at twice and you say. Hey. Is this name giving 5,000? Now you see Dr. Wangai is trying to impress us. We are being massaged to give, even for the camp. I was in a camp in Migori, Migori West. Migori, Migori West SDA Church. They gave a camp offering of 1.7 million. And there are slam. Actually, it has made me increase my camp offering. Because I was there, and I was, you know, you, you understand the, the strength of a church depending on the vehicles that are parked. So as a visitor, I was keen to observe. There was only, there was only a vehicle except one blue one, Pro Box. Which you would not know the owner because it is the only vehicle in the church. Everybody was driving it. Later on, I discovered that it was of one of the elders. Those guys come meeting, they are in uniform. And ask them why. They say there are some of us that are so poor. So we want to make it normal. By having the same word. Uniform. The elders are in uniform. Every day of the camp. I looked at them and I said, I wish some of you will be brought to Nairobi, new life, so that you help us. Now, what touched me the most, why I had to increase my camp offering, was when I was told that there are women, when you want to use mboga, pastor. I want to have a banda, when I want to mboga, skuma kwa barabara. So, kikundi cha nyanya, tomatoes there, and kikundi cha sukuma hapa. Wanakatia watu. Those women compete. The list they gave for the camp was 30,000. From mama mwenye nausa nini? Mboga. I'm afraid to say that there is poverty that will come to us in this new life like a flood. Sijui tutaiepa haje. And if you are careful, you can actually see the glimpses of those curses starting to triple in. If you are careful. Kama mama mwenye nausa mboga na, na tomatoes kwa barabara can give 30,000 for offering your expenses. If you were to give 30,000 here, you know how much that would be. Who will stand here to impress you to look for money? We are doing, doing so poorly. There's a plot here. I don't know whether it is 600 million. When Mogere came to be the, the development chair, I told him, focus so that we buy this. Because I saw we are just murdering. We, we are not focused on anything. And the blessings of the Lord will never be poured to our people. We are not spending their money. 
for the kingdom of God. It went, it is still empty. Upper Numa. That is how churches build churches. Ambayo ata 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 inaituaje kuku iwe siwe kamugu hivi. We had an opportunity, but we lazy around in our offerings. Kwa una peana five thousand. A widow here who has not job is giving five thousand. What are you telling God? And yet you walk in with Range Rover. Look at our church. How many years has this church been like this? As if we don't have men within us. Pastors will never tell you these things. We have now turned to be a church where we are competing with stealing money from the divine treasury. So you want a department and what you are focusing on is how can I steal money from here? Not all of us, but many of us. Why should the church be like this as if we don't have men in the church who are blessed? Yes, we have Range Rovers, we have V8s. Look at the, the vehicles that are parked out here. A sign of wealth. And yet you remain in a structure. Lovington came after you, has built. Karangata, 120 million. What is wrong with us? Sometimes I look at us and I say, I wish I could even transfer my membership. Because of the curse that is coming in. When you have, you know we are the most, the majority. Almost in this conference. In terms of population. Where much has been given, God expects what? Have ended. Even political parties do not run out of funds. How do we let the church of God run out of funds? What's wrong with us? We confused our assignment. The vehicle that is used for the salvation of man is the church. Praise the Lord. And we need to relook at our giving seriously in Jesus' name. We need to support the cause of God in Jesus' name. And for that to happen, we need God's blessings. We need a name change. We need to be transformed. And that is the call. And it's a call to all the men that is in the congregation. And I'm asking all the men to rise up as we conclude. All the men will never give to God unless you have led your family in the true worship. I mean all the men. Ata vijana wenya wajaoa tusimami katika jina la Yesu. As the choir comes and we sing song number 294. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood of the Lamb. Stanza one, we men need to remain seated. All the men, we need the Lord's blessings. And that's the difference. That is the assignment that God has given us to lead our family in the true worship of Jehovah. Stanza one only. Free from the burden of sin, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. Keep power in the precious blood of the Lord. I want to make an impossible call. And the impossible call is that if you need God's blessings, look at your life and you say, Father, I need a touch. The touch of God, I need to be transformed. I need 
your blessing. That my family may be blessed. If you are here, maybe your father is not here. You want to come on behalf of your daddy. If he's not here, some of you are here. Your father died. The one who is remaining with mommy. You want to come for those blessings on behalf of your family. You will come. And if you're here, and I want the men to hold the hands of the people that are around them. Hold the person that is next to you. A man who is next to you, hold their hands. Look for a man that is next to you. Jacobo led the family to give up other gods. And somebody is here, somebody's son who is not baptized. Can I see those who are baptized first? In the congregation, if you are baptized, carry your hands. For the men, those who are baptized, carry up your hands. You can look around and see the men who are not carrying up their hands. They have not been baptized. If they are willing that you bring them up front, like Jacobo brought forth his children, then walk with that person up front. As you also come seeking for your blessing, willing to give up the other gods that may be at home. We are singing stanza two as we respond. And the response is, God bless me. And as you are responding to that call and asking God to give you a new a name change, there's also somebody that you are holding that has not been baptized, that, you are that is willing that they may be brought up to God. Come with them. We are singing Sansa 2 as we respond. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. We need the blessings of God. Of the Lord. Change me, transform me, that my family wonder may be transformed. In the precious blood of the Lord. Stands a tree. Would you do service for Jesus, your King? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily His praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. Of the Lamb, there is power, there is power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Stands one again as the men are coming with those who want to be baptized. From their burden of sin. On my right, leave the ones who want to be baptized. The blood, this side, power those who are the saved, blood. bless us. Would you come to give the victory? victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, there is power, wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. Yes, sir, those who want to be baptized. Oh, the love. Those who have been baptized and needs God's power. blessings this side. Wonder working power. In the precious blood of the Lord. Stanza two. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's side. There's wonderful power in the blood. 
is power, is power. What a working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lord. Of the Lord. There is power, is power. What a working power in the precious blood of the Lord. Let me see those who are saying, bless me. I've come that you give me a new change, Lord. Bless me that I may bless my family. The Lord has seen those hands. May the blessings of Jacob will come to you and your family is in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me see those who have come for baptism by a show of hand. We have not been baptized, but we are willing to give our lives to God. Just carry up your hands wherever you are. We want to be baptized. That's why we have come. Move closer to pastor. Pastor will pray for you. Just come here. As we sing the chorus again, and allow them to come. Those all, those who want to be baptized. Come next to pastor. Come, 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 come. Wherever you are. Just come. There is power. One the walking power in the blood of the Lord. Stand. We are the ones who are remaining. And the question I want to ask you Will your husband get anything from you that he married you? I'm saying that because Leah gave Jacobo, the women gave Jacobo the 12 tribes of Israel. Those are the children of Jacob. In Leah, he had the tribe. Of the Levites, those who ministered in the sanctuary. He had the tribe of Judah. Will your husband get anything that he married you? What is the profit that you are a wife to your husband? Will he get anything? Let's take it a notch. Will God get anything that you are his daughter? What is the profit that comes from the fruit of your womb? I ask you, as I ask myself, because I too am a mother. Will Okumu get anything for the fact that he gave birth to children with me? What kind of children are we giving up? Will they be a blessing to the kingdom? Or will they remain a curse to the kingdom? What are they doing in the church for God as we speak? Where are our children? You look at it and you say, Father, bless me. But as you come, let's see the women that are baptized in the congregation. You can see the ones that are not baptized. You can't want to bring a daughter on behalf of another mother before the Lord. If they are willing, then you bring them. As you also bring our children and you say, Father, bless me. That I may have something to show for the fact that I am a woman. That I gave up. We need God's blessings in our children. In case that speaks to you. You want to be honest. and Say father. Bless this fruit of my womb. Then you come. As we sing only stanza one. Then pastor will pray. You bring the ladies that want to be baptized. As you also seek a blessing. That the Lord who bless the womb of Rachel. The one who bless the womb. Of Leah. Bila. That he may also bless the fruit, the seed of our womb in Jesus' name. That can only happen. It only happened when Jacobo and Rachel united in the true worship of God. It happened when Rachel was willing to give up his gods. When Leah, the family were united in Christ. If that is your prayer, then you come. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you, oh evil, love him? 
victory win. There's wonderful power in the blood. In the blood. There is power, there is power. Wonder walking power. Bless me. In the blood. That I may not give birth in vain. And those who don't have children can also come. And as God to open their wombs, that they too may have children in Jesus' name. Precious blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood. Power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. In the blood. There is power, there is power. power. Wonder working power in the blood. In the blood. All the love. There is power, there is power. Wonder working power in the precious blood. Amen. Anyone that is being brought for our baptism, thank you, mommy, for bringing that daughter of our fellow mother, woman. Is there anyone who is coming for baptism among us, the ladies? Is there any? Ah, beautiful. Another person? We are going to pray. Come. Those who are coming for baptism, come. Come. There is power. And it's not just another power. It is wonder working word. Power. That's what Jacob used to fulfill his assignment. Until the family were united in the worship of true God. And because of that, God spoke. Today we are praying. And our prayer is simple. That Father do what? Bless us. We need the Lord's blessing. May the Lord forgive your sins. That you may be blessed by him. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor will pray for us. Find a place to kneel down. Even those who are remaining, you can kneel with us as we conclude the meeting. Loving Father, in the blessed name of Jesus, the one and only name to be confessed on earth and in heaven, we praise you for the grace of this day, the blessing of this day, the privilege to come in your presence in worship, to come to be blessed of your word, and we thank you for your word that has come our way through your servant, Sister Rosalind, your daughter, may your name be praised. We thank you for helping us to come to the understanding that you have an assignment for us. We praise your name that you could consider a people like us to be part and parcel of our, uh, that assignment. But Lord, you know how we have run away from that assignment. How we have taken that assignment lightly. We confess our sins. Wash us from our iniquity and sanctify from us from our transgression. Restore us, dear Lord, unto yourself, into your assignment. We kneel on our knees, Lord, in gratitude for the blessing of your word that has been our portion today. We kneel in confession like Jacob, who accepted to be conquered of you. And that way he was blessed. You to have his way, to have your way in his life. And we kneel here, Lord, to accept you to conquer us. From our birth, we are born in our own life. But from this day forward, we cease. And we welcome you to have your way in our lives. For it is only this way that we are this way that we can be a blessing. May you therefore the men are here that are here on account of accepting to be you. May you bless their generations.
Father, we also pray to thank you for the ladies that are here and who also request that they may be conquered of you. Accept their request. Reign in their lives. May they be blessed on account of surrendering to your lordship, surrendering their, their life to your, your life, accepting to be conquered of you that you may reign in their lives, that this way their generation may be blessed. We honor you and thank you even as you do this in our ministry. Father, we thank you as a church and we pray that you conquer us new life, that we may be the blessing that you want us to be. Have your way in our lives, not our way, but your way. We praise your name, Lord, for your children who have come affront, not just for the blessings, but to have the real blessing to accept you as their Lord and Savior. Amen. Receive them unto yourself and keep them in you the rest of their lives. We thank you indeed for this special group. And even as we prepare them for this, this baptism that we will have, may your name be glorified. Now, Lord, we pray that as we leave this church, we leave not your presence, but with your blessings and in abiding in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God in the highest, Sovereign ruler of the universe. The one who has all authority. In heaven and on earth. We kneel before you. Without apology. That the world may see. That we have chosen to be your children. That we are not. Lingering in our decision. To make you our Lord. And the king of our lives. We come in Jesus mighty name. The Lord our righteousness. We plead for mercy upon us as a church. For we have not done according to your will. In many a ways we have fallen short of your expectation as a church. According to the numbers that you gathered in this congregation. Yes. Our giving is below standard. Job, our worship is below what you expect. We have misrepresented you. We want to go in public for you and yet in our private lives we have denied you. You saw Jacob and you wrestled with him. You left him with a mark, a mark of his faith. He limped as a sign that it was not his strength but the strength that came from above. We pray Jehovah, grateful that our men have come. The husbands of my fellow women. You conquered Jacob or Jadu. Father, we pray that you conquer them. In Jesus' name. Amen. We plead, Jehovah, that you touch them in their area of weakness. That the blessing may flow in our homes in Jesus' name. Pray, Jehovah, that you lead them to give up the gods like Jacob did. In a night, he stopped witchcraft. In a night, he conquered deceit. He conquered his lust. He allowed you to. Jehovah, he prevailed. And his family prevailed. This is a man who will be in heaven with all his children. We pray, Jehovah, that conquer our men. They are here. That we may be saved in your kingdom with our children. In Jesus' name. Conquer them that they may lead the family to the unity of the worship of the true God alone. In Jesus' name. We present them before you. Holy Father, you never do mistakes. You gave them to us that the heads of our family. We pray, Jehovah the Lord, that you pluck them from the chains of the evil one into your marvelous light in Jesus' name. That we will have children who can pray in moments of crisis, invoking the names of their fathers. Like Jacob did for Ibrahim and Isaac. Have mercy, O Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you that you have told us that our plans will not succeed, but the prayer. The children have offered prayers individually. May you hear those prayers and bless them in Jesus' name. King of the universe, the story of Jacob remains in the Bible if we don't see it in our lives and in our homes. We pray that with the powers that are vested in thee, power that no one else, that you bring this story into our families. As we see our children stop 
devil worshiping witchcraft, walking with the enemy and they start walking with you. Unite us in the worship of the true God in Jesus' name. Children have come, oh Lord, that they have said yes to you, that they want to be baptized, to make it anew with you. I don't know the circumstances that brought them forth, but I know it's the moving of the power of the Holy Spirit. Who knew them where they were standing? We thank you, Jehovah, for enabling them to come. I plead with you that they will, will not regret the decision they have made today. But that you will hold their hands as you did from the floor up to the altar. Holy Father, bless them. Bless them with material blessings. Bless them with eternal life. Put them close that they will never regret this decision in Jesus' name. We need your blessings, Lord. As new life family. Have mercy on us. You put us together, different tribes. It is not a mistake. For the sacrifice of the blood of Jesus Christ is what makes us gather to this. We pray for revival. That the love that we used to feel about each other will come back in Jesus' name. Pray, Jehovah, that you touch the leadership of the church. That we will be united behind the leadership. And behind you above all in Jesus' name. Bless our pastors, O oh Lord. Bless Pastor Jacob Akali and his wife, Hanis, in Jesus' name. Bless Pastor Emmanuel and his wife, Mary, in Jesus' name. Bless Pastor Sammy and his wife, Janet, in Jesus' name. Holy Father, bless them that their children may be blessed in Jesus' name. Whatever our parents encourage them. That the promise is still true, I am with you. That you are with them here in new life and nothing can befall them because of your presence. Encourage them for us, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Help us to do good to your men. I was in Migori West. They even built churches for their pastors. Holy Father, have mercy on us. Because you have blessed us that we may be a blessing to the kingdom. Where we have done it lessly, we pray for forgiveness. Where we have misunderstood your men, we pray for forgiveness. We pray, Jehovah, that no curse will fall upon us, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Have mercy. We thank you. May revival spring out of true godliness among us in Jesus' name. And above it all, when the role will be called up yonder, when time shall be no more. When churches will be assembling before you, O Lord, may we carry one with us in the kingdom. Save us when you come again in glorious new life. I know it is impossible, but all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. And whatever is impossible with man is possible with God. Hear our prayer. Revive us. Transform us in Jesus' name. Holy Father, this is my humble prayer this afternoon. May the words remain in our hearts through the power of the Holy Ghost. To remember as we wait for your soon return in Jesus' name. Kenya is at the verge of breaking. The child is to be born, but there is no strength to push the child forward. We pray for your intervention. That this nation will go, not go to bloodshed again. We plead with you in Jesus' name. We pray, Jehovah, that you come in and speak a peaceful transition in Jesus' name. And we pray that with the new government, that it will not be against us in any way. In the name of Jesus Christ, that your word and your boundary will be expounded like than never before in Jesus' name. We thank you. We magnify your name. Thank you for allowing us to be in your presence. As we release our knees from the ground, I plead with you that each one of us will be, have a touch of faith, a touch of blessing that will come out of the ground blessed. Whatever your children are asking with the tears before you, Holy Father, give them according to your will and save us in the kingdom is our prayer with a lot of humility. And gratitude before you, the God of the universe, the honor of the world. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen and amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name.